Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade Diophantine system. In other words, we're going to be solving a system of equations for positive integer solutions. Now we have xyz plus xy plus xz plus yz equals 22 and x plus y plus z equals 7. And xyz are all positive integers. Great. We could definitely just check all xyz that satisfy the second equation. So three numbers whose sum is 7. There aren't that many, right? For example, we could use x equals 2, y equals 2, and z equals 3. Let's go ahead and plug it in, right? I mean, 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 7, so that's good. x, y, z is going to be 12. x, y is going to be 4. x, z is going to be 6. y, z is going to be 6. And if we add these up, 12 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6, that's going to give us 12 plus 12 plus 4, which is 28. So we're kind of over the 22 by 6. That's too much. And obviously, you can play around with these numbers until you get a solution. But obviously, if you didn't have a 7 instead of that, you had a 17 or some large number, you wouldn't want to go through all the options, right? That's going to take forever. So there's a better approach. Let's go ahead and talk about it. And here's the better approach. And first of all, I want to just raise up a question here. What does it take to be able to solve these kinds of problems? The answer is being familiar with identities. All right? So let me rewrite the problem. x, y, z plus x, y plus x, z plus y, z equals 22. And x plus y plus z is 7. All right, so we got ourselves a system. And by the way, we said Diophantine, so x, y, z are positive integers. If x, y, z are real numbers, then there will be infinitely many solutions. Okay? That's why the solutions are restricted. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add these two equations. And you'll see in a little bit why we're doing it. And if we add them, we're going to get something like this. x, y, z plus x, y plus x, z plus y, z plus x plus y plus z is equal to 29. So here's a million dollar question. Is this equation factorable? The answer is no. However, with a little addition, things can brighten up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add 1 to both sides. And again, you'll see why in a little bit. Again, if you're familiar with these kinds of expressions, and I believe there was a problem on AMC 8 or 10, a few years ago or many years ago that uses this type of identity. So this is not the first time I'm coming up with something like this, but, uh, you know, the idea is sort of mine. That's why I called it homemade. Anyways, we, if we add 1 to both sides, we're going to get xyz plus xy plus xz plus yz plus x plus y plus z plus 1 equals 30. Again, you might be questioning, like, why on earth are we adding 1 to both sides? Because that's going to make it factorable. So the, when you ask the question, is this factorable? Maybe. Actually, the answer is yes, it is factorable. Let me show you how. To be able to factor something like this, there's obviously more than one way to approach it. But one method that I really like is to collect the terms that has a certain variable in them. How about z? To z or not to z? So this one, this one, this one and obviously z by itself, right? So all these terms have z in them. And what's nice about it is that we have a total of eight terms, and half of them has a z, and or have a z, and the other half don't have a z, okay? Uh, so if you look at the original sum, then we have seven terms. So when you have seven terms, that's another motivation for adding something to both sides, because you don't want to have seven terms. You don't want to have an odd number of terms because you can't really group them. That's not good. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Every term that I boxed has a z in it. So I'm going to take out a z. x, y, plus x, plus y, plus 1. Because I have 1 z. Plus everything else is x, y, plus x, plus y, plus 1. Wow. It's the same thing inside the parentheses. So why not put this in parentheses? and put a 1 in front of it, and yes, you got the first step for factoring. 
Now we do have the same thing in parentheses, so let's go ahead and take it out. xy plus x plus y plus 1, we'll deal with that separately, multiply by z plus 1. This is called factoring by grouping, but of course we had to manipulate things a little bit. We, do, we did need a 1 in the equation, otherwise it wouldn't be factorable. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's go ahead and deal with the first factor and now we'll just attach the z plus 1. Well, if you look at the first factor, it's also factorable by grouping x times y plus 1 and 1 times y plus 1. And that is equal to x plus 1 times y plus 1. If you just attach the z plus 1 to it, you're going to get x plus 1, or let me rewrite the original problem. So in other words, x, y, z plus x, y plus x, z plus y, z plus x plus y plus z plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times y plus 1 times z plus 1. If you don't believe that, go ahead and multiply and you'll get the same thing. Make sense? Now, since this is equal to 30, we know that, right? Because we added 1, it was 29. Now, this is equal to 30. So we get ourselves a really nice equation. So basically, one of the methods that we use for solving Diophantine equations in systems is factoring. Another one is modular arithmetic. And I made a separate video on Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and check that out here. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. This is a very easy problem because think about it. We have three positive integers whose product is 30. But here's the thing. If 30 can be written as, for example, 30 can be written as 1 times 2 times 15, right? Obviously. But 1 is not going to work. We can't use 1 because if you use 1, let's say for x plus 1, then x will be 0, but that's not good because x, y, z are positive integers. They can't be 0 or negatives. Make sense? Cool. And we do know that x, y, z does not equal 0, which means none of them is 0. So you can never use a 1 in the product. So how do you factor 30 into the product of three integers that are all greater than or equal to 2? And there's actually only one way to do it, and that's called prime factorization, and it is unique. Prime factorization of an integer is unique, and the proof for uniqueness is very interesting. You can look it up. There's only one way to break it down into primes, and this is 2 times 3 times 5. So, obviously we're going to consider the permutations, but let's just find one of the solutions. So x plus 1 can be 2, y plus 1 can be 3, and z plus 1 can be 5. Remember, those were the factors that went into this product, right? So from here we get x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 4. Obviously, they can switch around, so x comma y comma z, I'm going to write it as a set that will consider all the permutations. So x, y, z can be 1, 2, or 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.